it's been a long time since we had a time to had a chance to talk. How have you been, huh? It has been a while, but I've been well. I've been good. Life is good. Uh, we're grandparents now. We have four grandchildren in the last two years. And uh, but like most people, you know, trying to deal with this pandemic and you know the elections, it was very exhausting and draining. Uh, but yeah, I'm well. I know we have basketball again, although no fans, but it's a step in the right direction. So I'm enjoying life, Jim. You've always been one to take and learn life lessons. What have you learned, Jamal, from the last few months because of all the things that we've been going through? Well, uh, one thing I've learned is not to take things for granted, not to take our democracy for granted, um, you know, not to take the way our lifestyle for granted with the pandemic just putting a clamp on everything. So it's it's uh, seriously focused me back inward and being grateful and, and thankful and, 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 and hopefully more kind with people because that's what I think we need uh, in our world today is more kindness toward each other. Did you mention grandparents? Yes, I did, Jim. <laughs> Grandpapa Silk? Granddaddy Silk. <laughs> and Nana, and Nana. <laughs> oh, and Nana. How many do you have now? We have four, two sets of twins. Oh my goodness! Yeah, unbelievable. Well, that keeps that that keeps that keeps uh, Grandpa running, going around quite a bit, doesn't it? It does, yeah. But it also keeps me young. <laughs> yeah, well, you always have been. You know, Jamal, you um, you end up with the Lakers. You have a fabulous career, and I'm wondering how you feel when people say that Jamal Wilkes is a Laker legend. I just can't really express. The, 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 the admiration I receive even today, mm -hmm. and we always felt the Lakers had a higher standard than the NBA. You know, you, know, you, you being a legend, I know how, uh, how modest you are. The Lakers wouldn't be the Lakers of today if Jamal Wilkes didn't play for them when you did. So, you know, you have set the stage for, for a, lot of, uh, a lot of championships, a lot of parades, and a lot of wonderful players as well. Well, I appreciate you, Jim, and, and, and I feel that way as well. I feel I was an important cog, not only on the court, but behind the scenes in terms of helping guys, you know, learn the system, helping guys get along, you know, tremendous egos, and, and with management, you know, helping them smooth, smooth it around. And, and, you know, Jim, a lot of people ask me, do I regret playing when I did, meaning would I like to get play today and get the big money? And, and I tell them no, because I felt I played during a golden time. Uh, not just in the Lakers and the NBA, but in sports and in our culture. And, and I'm just so proud, proud to have that. And, you know, and, you know, Jim, as well as I'm, I mean, money's great, but it's not everything. And, and I think, you know, there's a lot to be said for relationships, happiness, peace of mind, you know, just getting along with folks. What would you say is your greatest accomplishment with the Lakers? Wow. Well, I was blessed to be on three championship teams uh, and each one is different. They're kind of like children. Each one has its own story and it's hard to differentiate one from the other. I mean, I'm ecstatic to be in the hall of fame, but, but I think uh, being a key member of Showtime and, and, and the mystic men and everything that that conjures up, uh, which is a icon in our society. I, I, I think just being a Laker was my greatest accomplishment. And that term Showtime, that's, uh, that's, really, that's really amazing because you had a lot of Hollywood stars who were in awe of you and your teammates. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we're in awe of them and they can't get a ticket to get in to see us. I mean, that was, that was truly, a, truly a highlight just to, and, and you can talk about that, but to live that and to feel that, uh, you can't explain it. Uh, it's just special. And you, had, and you had some very special teammates because, you know, what you did and what you accomplished was really amazing because the Lakers did everything, not only on the floor, but off the floor as well. Whenever there was something going on in the community, the Lakers were always there to help. You know, I'm so proud of our guys because whatever was going on, we were proud to wear that jersey. We were proud to represent the community. We, we, we felt an obligation to give back and you know uh, I, I, and I'm proud to say I did play with some of the greatest players in the game I mean you know Kareem and, and Magic and you know the, Coach Riley's in the Hall of Fame I mean, Bill Sharman Jerry West Dr. Buss 
all those names are just so magical. And speaking of magical, was there something kind of magical about your shot? Because a lot of people like to tease you about the way you shot that, what they say was an ugly shot. <laughs> That's being kind, Jeff. You know, <laughs> I, I never realized I was shooting any different uh, till I got to college. My first year in college, uh, Coach Wooden calls me over and, you know, says, uh, his first week of practice, says, I want you to shoot some jump shots around the key. And I'm stunned because you didn't want to be singled out at all. And so all the guys are watching, you know, everyone's holding their breath. So he says, I'm going to rebound for you. And, you know, I'm saying, Coach Wooden is going to rebound for me. So anyway, I shoot the shots. I'm drilling it. He said, now, now, how did you shoot that? And I, you know, showed him the motion. I was very confused. He said, does it have the good reverse spin? I thought about it. I said, yeah. He said, and then he rolled the ball out. Does it have the good reverse spin? I said, yeah, Coach. I mean, he said, okay, you're dismissed. And so years later, we laughed about it. But I wasn't trying to be different. I was just doing what I organically grew up doing. And fortunately, it worked. And that's why he didn't change my shot. He said my setup and my finish was text, but it was just what happened in between was <laughs> was a little different. But, but he could live with the result. <laughs> I remember talking to you and your teammates when you were at the zenith of your career. And you guys were talking about how sometimes practices were just as intense or maybe even more intense than some games that you played. You remember telling me that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's true. Sometimes our practices were often better than, than our games uh, because we had great players who were great people and we all, you know, wanted the minutes, you know, the opportunity to play and coach, you know, he was open-minded. So, I mean, we came to practice and we practiced hard and we practiced smart. And one of the funny things is James Worthy comes to the Lakers. Okay. He wanted number 52, but number 52 was already taken. And you weren't giving it up, were you? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was not. Well, I had the same thing happen to me when I went to Golden State. Uh, the number was already taken, and uh, George Johnson, who, who I love, would not give it up. So I made the adjustment. So that's why I wouldn't give it up for big game either. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he try to talk you into it? Oh, he tried to sweet talk me. <laughs> you know, he tried that country boy, you know, that, <laughs> but you know, he was real cool about it, but you know, I just, you know, I just couldn't give it up. And then 42 worked out well for him as well. Oh yeah. And now both those numbers are in the rafters. Yeah. Yeah. It's an honor. Big that, game. That's, that's... Yeah, we, I played with some great guys as you know, Jim, they were just, from top to bottom, just great people. You know, Jamal, when I think about your great career, what have you, what did athletics teach you about the game of life? Uh, I think first and foremost, just don't give up. You know, I mean, if, if you can imagine or dream something, just no matter what everyone's telling you, no matter what's going on around you, just hold, hold on to it. Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, and also when we talk about the, the fabulous forum, there were some people who went to the forum, didn't have tickets to get into the game, but they would go into the forum club and watch the whole game. Because sometimes the forum club was just as entertaining as, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're saying. And you're right. You're absolutely right. The forum club could be very entertaining. And, uh, oh, that was awesome. I mean, that was such an intimate venue. I mean, Staples is great too, but that was a special time in history. Jamal, talk a little bit about your relationship with, uh, with, with Dr. Buss, because when he came, I mean, he was the genesis of this whole thing just blowing up and becoming something extra special. Well, he absolutely was. And, and, and the first thing when you saw him, well, when you hear about his reputation and what he accomplished, you're in awe of him. But when you meet him, he's just so personable and he's wearing his jeans and there's no air of greatness about him. You know, he doesn't want to be, he treats, he treats everybody nice. So I had had my, my previous owners, Mr. Cook was a, who I didn't really know that well because he was going through a nasty divorce and he was up in Las, uh, uh, Las Vegas. And then my owner, my boss before that, the owner, Mr. Muley with the Warriors, he was kind of like a hippie, you know, he was out in the, on his motorcycle in the South Pacific. And, you know, I didn't really, the only one he talked to was Rick, you know, Rick Barry. So uh, when I met Dr. Buss, he was truly a breath of fresh air. And he really, he really encouraged me and each of us to extend ourselves, to, 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 to really open our minds and, 
and he was so supportive. And I remember my last contract negotiation, he, uh, you know, we wanted, my advisors wanted incentives, this, that, and the other. He said, no, the only incentive for me is winning the Western Conference. And, you know, coming from Coach Wooden, I mean, I could so relate to that. And, and, and so, you know, he was able to get me to buy into my success being the team's success. And, 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 um, uh, but he, he was, a he, he was a great friend and, 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 uh, just very smart and, and very open, very open with people. Jamal, why are the Lakers known the world over as the, as the, one of the preeminent sports franchises, not just in basketball, but in all of sports, why do the people around the world look at the Lakers as the global sports leader that you are and were? Well, I think it's the success that they've had over the years, the sustained success. And I think also the way they do things. I mean, if you come in and you perform and you do what they ask you to do, they'll take care of you. And, 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 and I think, uh, you know, uh, Jeannie Buss uh, has learned uh, very well and inherited that from her dad. And, you know, we had a few hiccups there for a while with the family struggles, but you know, she prevailed. And, and, and I think you're seeing the continuation of, of the sustained success and, and, and the way we did it. We didn't just win, we were entertaining. Yeah, no look pass, that, that silky smooth jump shot from the corner. Do you ever, you ever sometimes just realize how important you are to all of us in sports because especially the Lakers, because if it hadn't been for you, because you set the table for everybody else to come, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, I don't think of it often, but once in a while it will hit me when, especially when I hear a younger person say something or, or someone of my generation will just say something without really meaning it or thinking about it, but it, it has such an impact. And, and I go, wow, man, you know, I was part of something special. <laughs> you know, that is for sure. What do you think of the of, of the, the team the last the last few years, especially the last year and this year with uh, with LeBron and everyone? Well, I mean, you start with LeBron, King James. I mean, he just does everything. Um, you know, I can't think of anyone like him. And, and, and then you had Anthony Davis and Coach Vogel. And I, I just think that they've gotten back on track to sustaining the success of where it's a destination franchise. It's a franchise that players want to come to, uh, not, you know, because they have to be there. They want to be there. And I think they're back in that position now. And I'd like for you to, before we leave, I'd like you to talk about Pat Riley, because I know um, you and he had a very, very special relationship. Yes. Yes, we did. Uh, Pat was just, uh, well, we all see his brilliance now, but even way back then, you could see, you know, he was just brimming with, uh, you know, ideas and, and inspiration and, uh, you know, his practices were about as uh, intense and, and dynamic as Coach Wooden's. I mean, you know, everything was for a purpose, for a reason. There was no wasted motion, no wasted words. And, you know, he's gone on to become a brilliant executive as well. So. That says it all. <laughs> and then he went on to make that guarantee after you just won the championship <laughs> that you're going to do it again. He did. <laughs> and everyone wanted to kill him, but we did it. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> when, when, you, when you heard that at the forum that day, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Is he crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we just won it. And it's, it's hard to win a championship. I mean, everything has to go right. It's very, very difficult. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it just felt like, you know, we don't want to take this for granted, big fella. <laughs> <laughs> but the nickname Silk, you know, a lot of people today don't know where that came from. But I'd like you to tell us you, where Silk originally came from. Well, I was at UCLA, a sophomore, and students used to come watch his practice. Everybody used to come watch his practice. So one of the guys in the band uh, used to come and... I did a move that day. Anyway, we're in the dorms eating dinner afterward. All of us freshmen stayed in the same dorm and he was in the same dorm. And so he, he sees me in line. He goes, ah, 
Keith, uh, Keith, uh, 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 silk. He just blurted silk out, smooth as silk. So, you know, Bill Walton, Greg Lee, Vince Carson, uh, you know, the guys were around. And so they got a big kick out of it. They started calling me that. And then Dick Enberg heard the guys calling me that. And then he picked up, he picked up on it on the air. But that's where it came from. Just a, a student, Oliver Trigg. Uh, I remember his name. I, and uh, he was a, actually, he was a very bright, bright guy. But he just blurted it out. Smooth as so. Yeah, it's really amazing. Jamal Wilkes. Laker legend. Has a nice little ring to it, doesn't it? It does, Jim. It does. 